Odysseus, a name etched in the annals of Greek mythology, wasn't just any hero. He was a divine hero whose destiny was written in the stars. But who was Theseus really? Was he just a myth? Or did he walk among us in the lands that still stand today? Our story begins in the great city of Athens, a place that still resonates with the whispers of ancient heroes. Theseus was born to Aethra and King Aegeus, though some legends claim he was the son of Poseidon, the god of the sea. From birth, Theseus was destined for greatness, a destiny tied to the sacred city of Athens, a city that remains a beacon of ancient civilization. But the path to greatness is never easy. When Theseus came of age, he was sent to Athens to claim his birthright. His journey was fraught with dangers, encounters with bandits, wild beasts, and other perils that tested his strength and courage. Yet each victory brought him closer to the heart of Athens, where a new challenge awaited. The real test of Theseus's heroism lay not in Athens, but across the sea in Crete. At the time, King Minos of Crete demanded a gruesome tribute from Athens, seven youths and seven maidens sent every nine years to be devoured by the Minotaur, a terrifying creature born of Minos's lust and the god's wrath. This wasn't just a tale, it was a reminder of the brutal conflicts that once existed between these ancient civilizations, conflicts that left their mark on the land. The labyrinth that housed the Minotaur was no ordinary structure. Designed by the ingenious Daedalus, the labyrinth was a prison, as much as it was a masterpiece, a maze so complex that even its creator could barely navigate it. The ruins of the palace of Gnossos still stand today, a testament to the grandeur of Crete and the myths that have been woven around it. Determined to end the bloodshed, Theseus volunteered to be one of the sacrifices, but he had no intention of becoming a victim. With the help of Ariadne, the daughter of King Minos, Theseus received a crucial tool, a ball of thread. This seemingly simple object would guide him back through the labyrinth's winding passages after confronting the Minotaur. But this wasn't just about physical survival. It was a battle of wits and courage. Deep within the labyrinth, Theseus faced the Minotaur, a creature of pure fury, half man, half beast. The battle that followed was as much a test of Theseus's strength as it was a trial of his resolve. Each swing of his sword, each dodge brought him closer to the creature's demise, and with a final, decisive blow, Theseus slayed the Minotaur, liberating Athens from its gruesome tribute. But the victory was only half the battle. With the Minotaur defeated, Theseus had to navigate back through the labyrinth, using the thread Ariadne had given him. In this moment, the thread symbolized more than just a guide. It was a lifeline, a connection to the world outside the maze, where freedom awaited. But what happened to Crete after Theseus left? The death of the Minotaur and the end of the tribute marked the beginning of the decline for King Minos. His authority, which had been bolstered by fear and power, began to wane. The once great kingdom of Crete would never be the same, its dominance over the Greek world slowly fading as Athens rose in prominence. The labyrinth itself no longer needed became a symbol of the dangers of hubris and the importance of wisdom over brute strength. King Minos had fought hard to ascend the throne, even praying to Poseidon for a sign of divine approval, a snow-white bull. But when Minos refused to sacrifice the bull as promised, the god's wrath was severe. Minos's wife? Pacify was cursed to fall in love with the bull, resulting in the birth of the Minotaur. Initially cared for by Pacify, the creature became too violent as it grew older, forcing Minos to imprison it in the labyrinth designed by the master architect Daedalus. As Theseus sailed back to Athens with Ariadne, Crete's power began to crumble. The death of King Minos's son, Androgeus, had already forced Athens to pay a brutal tribute of youths and maidens, cast into the labyrinth to be devoured by the Minotaur. But with the Minotaur's death, that dark chapter ended, signaling the beginning of Crete's decline. After slaying the Minotaur and freeing Athens from its gruesome tribute, Theseus set sail from Crete with the young Athenians and Ariadne, the daughter of King Minos, who had helped him navigate the labyrinth. But this is where the story takes a darker turn. As they made their way back to Athens, Theseus and his crew stopped on the island of Naxos, it was here that Theseus made a fateful decision. He abandoned Ariadne while she slept, leaving her alone on the island. But why? Some say the gods intervened, commanding him to leave her behind, while others believe that Theseus's ambitions outweighed his loyalty. Ariadne's fate wasn't the end, though. 
She was later found by the god Dionysus, who made her his wife. But the tragedy didn't end there. As Theseus sailed closer to Athens, he forgot to change the sails of his ship from black to white, the signal that would inform his father, King Aegeus, that he had survived. Seeing the black sails, Aegeus, overwhelmed with grief, threw himself into the sea, which has since borne his name, the Aegean Sea. Theseus' story didn't end with the labyrinth. In fact, it was just the beginning of his legendary adventures. After slaying the Minotaur and escaping Crete, Theseus returned to Athens as a hero, but his life was far from peaceful. He soon embarked on a series of perilous quests that tested his strength, cunning and resolve. One of his earliest challenges after the labyrinth was facing the infamous Procrustes, a bandit who terrorized travelers along the road from Athens to Eleusis. Procrustes was known for his sadistic iron bed where he would force victims to lie down. If they were too short, he would stretch them until they fit. If they were too tall, he would amputate their limbs. Theseus, known for his sense of justice, met Procrustes and turned the tables on him, subjecting the villain to his own gruesome punishment. This act not only rid the world of a notorious criminal, but also cemented Theseus's reputation as a champion of justice. But Theseus's heroics didn't stop there. He was called upon to capture the wild Marathonian bull, a fearsome creature that had been wreaking havoc in the region of Attica. This bull was the same beast that Heracles had once captured as part of his twelve labors and released on the plains of Marathon. Theseus subdued the bull, showcasing his immense strength and courage, and brought it back to Athens as a symbol of his valor. Theseus's adventures also led him to face the notorious Chromionian sow, a monstrous pig raised by an old woman named Phea. This beast terrorized the countryside, and Theseus was the one to finally put an end to its rampage, further proving his status as a protector of the people. Perhaps one of the most famous episodes in Theseus's life was his journey to the underworld, a venture that few mortals dared to undertake. Theseus's close friend Pirithous decided to abduct Persephone, the queen of the underworld, to make her his bride. Theseus, always loyal, agreed to help him. Together, they descended into Hades, the realm of the dead. However, their bold plan quickly turned disastrous. Hades, aware of their intentions, trapped them in the underworld, binding them to a rock with unbreakable chains. There they remained imprisoned and forgotten until Heracles, during one of his own labors, ventured into the underworld. Out of respect for Theseus, Heracles managed to free him, but Pirithous was not so fortunate. Theseus returned to the world of the living, but the experience left him humbled and wary of the gods' power. Theseus's later years were marked by both triumph and tragedy. He became the king of Athens, where he unified the city and its surrounding territories, transforming it into a powerful state. He also played a crucial role in the tale of the Amazons, a race of fierce warrior women. According to legend, Theseus either abducted or was given the Amazon queen Hippolyta as a bride, leading to a great war between Athens and the Amazons. The conflict ended with Theseus's victory, but it came at a great cost, including the loss of Hippolyta. In another myth, Theseus's life took a dramatic turn when he became involved with Phaedra, the daughter of King Minos and sister of Ariadne. Phaedra fell in love with Theseus's son, Hippolytus, from his union with Hippolyta, leading to a tragic sequence of events. When Hippolytus rejected her advances, Phaedra falsely accused him of assaulting her. Enraged, Theseus cursed his son, calling upon Poseidon to exact vengeance. Poseidon sent a sea monster that frightened Hippolytus's horses, causing his chariot to crash and killing him. Phaedra, overcome with guilt, took her own life leaving Theseus to grapple with the heavy burden of his actions. Theseus's story is one of great heroism and deep tragedy, filled with battles against monstrous foes, encounters with gods and decisions that led to both glory and sorrow. His legacy as a founder hero of Athens endures, but it is also a cautionary tale about the dangers of hubris and the complex interplay between fate and free will in the lives of mortals. Now let's delve into some lesser known facts. Did you know that the Minotaur's real name was Asterios or Asterion, meaning starry or star-like? The name Minotaur means Bull of Minos. Also, some scholars believe the myth reflects the historical dominance of Minoan Crete over the Greek mainland. The tribute of youths from Athens to Crete may symbolize the power Crete held during the Bronze Age. One lesser-known detail about Theseus is that he was also a skilled diplomat. 
he used his diplomatic skills to forge alliances with other Greek city-states and to secure peace for Athens. In one of his most notable diplomatic achievements, Theseus persuaded the city of Thebes to return the bodies of the seven fallen Athenian warriors who had died to reclaim the city of Thebes from their Theban enemies. This act of diplomacy helped to heal the rift between Athens and Thebes and prevented further conflict between the two city-states. Theseus's diplomatic skills were also instrumental in his unification of Attica. He negotiated with the leaders of the twelve independent cities of Attica to persuade them to unite under a single government. This unification made Athens a much stronger city-state and helped to protect it from its enemies. 